I'm going to uh, present a formal proof of, of one of the most useful properties of logarithms, the, the sum rule. And the sum rule is um, what really got uh, John Napier interested in logarithms, I'm sure, back around 1600. He recognized that it would be possible to, to do multiplications by adding. And so uh, I think anybody would agree that it's, it's faster and more reliable to add numbers by hand than it is to multiply numbers, particularly larger numbers. So this, this had a kind of a computational attraction. And uh, I want you to really try to follow this proof because it's, it's good math thinking. And I also like you know impress upon students that uh, these, these so-called rules are not arbitrary at all. They are um, logical consequences of how we have defined and set up our math. And so um, here we go. Now, what I'm going to take advantage of is something I showed you in the last video. X could be rewritten as b raised to the log base b of x. So this is the, the little formulation that shows that the exponential function cancels the logarithm, logarithm function. They literally cancel. But it's, it's, a, it's kind of a funny way of writing x, but it's going to come in handy here in a moment. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with x times y equals to x times y. And I think nobody would dispute that. No matter what x and y are, their product is going to be equal. Except I'm going to look at the left side as being grouped together as a single piece, whereas the right side is separately x times y. All right, now I'm going to, uh, well, let me show you the right side first. I'm going to replace x with this formulation. So x is b raised to the log base b of x. So that's exactly this, this uh, little equation there. And I'm going to do the same thing with y. Uh, y would be b raised to the log base b of y. All right. Now on the left side, I'm going to treat this as a single piece. So here I'm going to use the same scheme, except it's going to end up being b raised to the log base b of parentheses x, y. So treating this as a single piece, I have just a single, single part here on the left side. All right, so uh, now from this point, I'm going to use the fact that logarithms are exponents, and when you multiply two numbers with the same base, you keep the base and add the exponents. Just to show you an old example from beginning algebra, if you had x squared times x cubed, that would be x to the fifth power because you would keep the base and add the exponents. I'm going to do the same thing here. My base here is, is letter b and my exponents are these logarithms. So I'm going to combine this into a single term and that ends up being b raised to the log x base b plus log y base b. So I simply multiplied and added exponents over there. And we'll, we won't change anything over here. This is still b to the log base b x y. All right, now here's the, here's the amazing uh, thing about all this. The, uh, we have an exponential equation, but the bases are equal. And what happens when the bases are equal? then we can, if you want to, you can ignore the bases because the exponents must be equal. So here I have this equation, the log of xy base b equals to the log of x base b plus the log of y base b. So there we go. Now this is the, the sum rule of logarithms. Which says that when you multiply a product, it can be written as a sum of logarithms. Similarly, if you have a, a sum of two logarithms, it can be written as a product. And in and, and both those you know, ways of looking at it, the bases have to be equal. So that's, that's an assumed thing. If you're, 
if your base here, bases here are unequal, then this doesn't work at all. But, but there it is. Now, um, so that's what I was saying. It's, it is possible to, to multiply by adding logarithms. Okay, if, well, if you have a table. Now, um, when I was a kid, uh, up until high school, uh, I, I'm just old enough to have uh, learned logarithms for their original purpose, which was computation. All math books had a table of logarithms in the back, and we learned in high school, I learned how to um, use logarithms to multiply, uh, divide, raise things to powers, and, and do all these computations. And so let me just give you a quick, quick example of this. And uh, so let's look at the, the log. Uh, let's look at uh, something that I know is going to be easy for me. What is... 80 times 125. Okay. Well, um, oops, I forgot my calculator. I'm going to pause the video for a moment while I find my calculator. Okay, got, got my calculator. Now, the, um, I'm going to work in common log, base 10 log. So, what's the log of 80? That's equal to 1.903089986699. All right, now that I used all the decimals on my calculator, and there are many. Yeah, in the old days, you would get three or four places in, in the back of the book. You know, that's all the accuracy you had for logarithms. Uh, all right, and if I punch in the log of 125, let's see, we get log 125 is 2.09691001301. Now, what happens when you when you add these numbers together? And uh, you, can, you can check this out. Those add together to be exactly 4. Okay, you can, you, can, you, can, you can look it up. You can verify it. And it turns out the logarithm of 10,000 in base 10, remember we're in base 10, common log, is 4. So now, you know, if you didn't know that, you could hit... Um, on your calculator, the inverse log would be 10 to a power, so 10 to the fourth power would be 10,000. All right, well, you know, in, um, in, a, in another sense, let me find one, uh, let me uh, do one that's a little, a little messier than this. Suppose we had, wanted to figure out, um, oh, 639 times 5,187. Okay, by using logarithms. So if I punch in the log of 639, so log of 639 is 2.8055008. And the log of 5,187 is 3.7149162479. If we add those together, let's see, log 639. All right, we get 6.52. Zero four one seven one zero six one five. All right, now I'm going to take this number to a power, so ten to the six point five two zero four one seven one zero six one five is going to be. Um, oops. All right. Well, let's see. Ten to the six point. Five two 
0417106150615 is 3000 let's see 33144 looks like it's going to be 93 okay i actually have 2.9998 the way i punched it on my calculator i know it's going to round off to a whole number because they're multiplying whole numbers all right so let's uh let's check that out 639 times 5187 is that number, 3,314,493. All right, so now, you know, the, <laughs> the irony is that um, if you have a calculator, you would never use logarithms this way. But it's a property I want you to learn because it's part of learning the subject. It still has use, even though we don't do this anymore. We don't do these kinds of, you know, we don't put it to that use anymore. It's still um, a good property to know because it has other uses. So, um, but, you know, in the old days, and I'm talking like uh, before the mid-70s, eh, about 1974 and before, then you would, you would learn this in school. And you would get only about those many places in the back of the book, and you would add them, and then you'd have to figure out what this meant. You would really look up 0.5204, and you'd probably get 3.314, and then you know if the 6, it has 6 uh, places afterwards. It's like times 10 to the 6th power. So you would have to uh, learn about how to, how to manipulate these and, and interpret them. But, uh, but anyway, that's, that's how that worked. Now, this, um, in my book, I have a picture of my slide rule. Actually, it was my brother's slide rule, but I, I kept it. He, uh, he got it around 1966 or 67 when he was taking an electronics course in high school. And uh, of course, I, I wanted to learn how to use it, and I ended up keeping it. And um, so there's a picture of my, my slide rule in the book, um, which you should take a look at. Uh, I don't know where my slide rule is. It's probably in this cluttered room somewhere, but I happen to have another slide rule. This belongs to one of our engineering faculty, and it's actually uh, um, has more stuff on it than my, my slide rule. But anyway, that's a... Uh, that's a slide rule. It has this bar which slides back and forth either way. And there's a piece here that allows you to line up numbers so you can line up this to a certain number and bring this over to another number. And that would be the that would be a product. So if I took this number and added that number, I'm adding logarithms. And then there's a scale which reads off the product. Um, so it's a little easier to see this in my book if you, if you want to learn about that. So um, slide rules were um, very elegant computational instruments. I don't know their history, how, how far they go back, but uh, they were the calculator up until you know, the early to mid-70s. So uh, no one uses them anymore, but they're, they're nice, uh, nice devices. All right, well, let me uh, throw out the other, other rule here that goes along with this, the sum rule. And... Uh, And it's the difference rule. So if you took the log of x over y in any base, then that would be the difference. The log of x minus the log of y. So here's a way of dividing numbers by subtraction. So anyway, um, this is the difference rule. And So back around 1600, Napier and others figured out how to estimate logarithms, and they devised tables for astronomers. They also figured out how to calculate um, or estimate sines and cosines and tangents, trigonometric values. And they, they employed uh, rooms of people who were called uh, computers. <laughs> so they had computers were actually people who sat and did arithmetic all day. Uh, they employed rooms of people who were good at arithmetic to to help them figure out these tables, and these tables were very useful for, for large-scale computations. So if you had a lot of uh, things to multiply or divide, it was actually much faster to, to use these tables of logarithms. And um, now I have come across one instance in, um, <laughs> since the 1980s where I actually had to use this method for computation because the computation I wanted to do was literally too large for the computer. 
So uh, I'll tell you about that in a later video. But um, you know, the allure was is that you can, with a log table, a table of logarithms, with a log table you can multiply. So actually, uh, logarithms go back much farther than than uh, Napier in the 1600s. Um, if you go back to the Bible and Noah and the flood, one of Noah's uh, sons was charged to load the ark with male and female animals. He had to make sure they were capable of reproducing. And uh, one day he ran into a problem. He had these adder snakes from Egypt, and they're, they're very poisonous snakes, but you know, God says save everything. So, um, his son has male and female adder snakes, and, and they just had no interest in each other. He kept replacing them, could not find a pair willing to reproduce. So he took it to his dad and he said, Dad, you know, I'm having a problem with these adder snakes. And Noah thinks about it and looks around, and over in the corner he sees a, a table. A table made out of uh, rough hewn logs. And so he takes the snakes and throws them on the table, and boy, they go right to it. And his son said, Dad, how'd you know that? And Noah says, well, it's easy, son. Any adder can multiply on a log table. So anyway, goes back to the Bible. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but anyway, you look for it. So let's, um, let's go on and look at some more rules of logarithms.